My name is Ashok Rodriguez. I'm Ford's all-wheel drive technical specialist. So just uh, some background on, on Ford and all-wheel drive systems. Ford's an industry leader in all-wheel drive. Uh, we introduced the first on-demand electronically controlled uh, four-wheel driver uh, system into North America. That was on the 1995 Explorer. Uh, we've continued to innovate since that uh, point. We've got about 20 patents, uh, some of those held by a lot of people in this room here, for on-demand all-wheel drive controls. And uh, let me just take a minute to talk about what all-wheel drive, on-demand all-wheel drive is. On-demand means it's a system that's always going to drive one set of wheels, in this case the front wheels on the vehicles you'll see today, and then as needed or as demanded, drives the other wheels, the rear wheels. And as needed, uh, to some people on, on some of our competitors, uh, older vehicles especially, was just a, a slip type thing. People would say slip and grip like it's a, a good thing. But um, there's uh, much more to a sophisticated all-wheel drive system than just responding to slip. So if you look at some of the inputs that our system's using, the things that it's measuring, it's going far beyond that. It is measuring the wheel speed. So if something does slip, we'll still be able to respond to that. But it's looking at the actual speed, how fast the vehicle's really going using some of the inertial sensors on the vehicle, despite what the tires may be doing. <coughs> it looks at the steering wheel angle sensor to figure out what the driver is, is, is actually intending, where they're pointing that wheel to try to get the vehicle to go. It's looking at the, uh, the actual and estimated torques that the powertrain controller is generating. The powertrain controller is able to get a, a very accurate estimate of how much torque is actually being produced and how much the driver actually wants. We're also looking at the accelerator and the brake pedals. All these things end up being a very good indication of what the customer actually wants that vehicle to do so we can try and provide that for them. We look at the lateral acceleration. That's basically the cornering force that that vehicle is generating, how hard that's cornering. And then we're going to look at the actual yaw. That's the turning, the rotating of that vehicle. So we can use those things to help figure out where the vehicle's going, where the driver wants it to go. So this is uh, just a, a quick explanation of the uh, all-wheel drive system. The all-new 2013 Ford Escape with the available intelligent four-wheel drive system provides peace of mind as you take on all kinds of weather and winding roads. The fully automatic system instantly delivers torque to the appropriate wheels when wheel slip is detected. The advanced Ford developed software readjusts the power split to give an excellent blend of handling and traction at all times. By assessing road conditions 20 times faster than the blink of an eye, the system is able to sense traction input 60 times per second and automatically adjust torque distribution as needed. The all-new Ford Escape. So getting into a little bit of technical detail about what the control system does, the first part is what we call the traction module. That's the more traditional uh, focus that people have had for all-wheel drive systems and the this is kind of the don't get stuck type thing or make sure that the vehicle does well for winter driving from just a traction perspective. This is a low speed thing that's say subdivision type driving speeds and, and lower 25 miles per hour, 40 kilometers per hour and lower. That's the primary operation and that's going to basically focus on sending torque preemptively or what we call in a feed forward manner. Take care of something before it happens. In this case we're looking at taking care of slip before it happens and trying to prevent it from occurring in the first place. Now there are some circumstances, not too common, but it does happen that wheels can slip and we'll look at not just the degree of that slip but the duration of that slip in order to properly uh, judge our response and get, it, get rid of it as quickly as possible. Once you get up into to higher speeds, so starting at about 25 miles per hour, 40 kph or above, we'll start going to our vehicle dynamics module. Now we're going to focus on handling. As Mike mentioned, handling is an increasing reason for customers to buy all-wheel drive. And that's going to, first of all, split torque front to rear, as was mentioned in that video. Uh, a normal system, or I shouldn't say normal system, other systems would have a differential uh, in the uh, center of the vehicle to split torque front to rear. Differentials work well in that it's always nice to have torque to the front and the rear. The problem is that they're mechanical, they're fixed. And you can't electronically override that system and make it do what you want. So the nice thing is when we see that the vehicle is not going in the direction that the driver's pointing the steering wheel angle, we've got what we call a, a yaw error there. Uh, we're able to act on that by biasing torque to the front uh, wheels or uh, splitting that torque uh, all the way between the front and the rear wheels. So we will uh, look at that if the vehicle is, for example, understeering. It's steering less than you'd want. We'd lock our clutch up to get as much torque as possible back to the rear wheels. If the vehicle is oversteering, steering more than you'd want, we're able to send all that torque up to the front wheels to, uh, to help reduce that. And the system also will disable when dynamic driving is not detected. And that means that uh, because it's a very short uh, sh shot right out to the front wheels, 
we can be as efficient as possible. We don't have to go back through a rear drive line. The engine uh, goes right through, or the, right from the transmission right to the front wheels, and we can take the most efficient path for torque getting to the ground when, for example, you're just cruising down the road and nothing's happening. But as soon as anything dynamic is, is happening or detected that it may happen, we'll get torque back to those rear wheels to uh, act in that uh, preemptive, uh, quick manner. So just some uh, changes versus some of the old systems. Uh, improved reaction time. One of the things we've done with the vehicles you, you'll see out here is integrate into the powertrain control module. So we've got uh, controlling the powertrain, the engine, the transmission, an extremely powerful processor in the vehicle. We're taking advantage of that to move these uh, now increasingly sophisticated all-wheel drive controls in there for maximum computing power. And then we've got uh, more accurate reading of the conditions, all those sensors that you just saw. So just in summary of the uh, intelligent all-wheel drive, uh, what, what, what do we get for all this electronic capability? We help keep the vehicle on the intended path that the driver wants it to go on. We can under, uh, control understeer and oversteer much faster, reduce or even eliminate torque steer, and uh, precise blend of traction and handling. So the customers get both of the attributes that they would uh, increasingly expect from an all-wheel drive system. So all-wheel drive is integrated with other systems on the vehicle. On Explore, we've got a train management system. That's a drivable, driver-selectable uh, option, or excuse me, on all the all-wheel drive vehicles, it's a driver-selectable system that uses a rotary switch. It's got four modes. There's a normal mode for everyday driving. There's a mud and ruts mode, a sand mode, and a snow mode. Obviously, we'll be looking largely at the snow mode here. It's going to uh, adjust based on what the driver wants and uh, optimize for those conditions. It's integrating not just the all-wheel drive system, but the powertrain, the engine, the transmission, the uh, brake controls, all together into one system to give you a coherent uh, feel for what's most appropriate for that terrain. And this is exclusive to Explorer. Some more info on the terrain management system. The innovative new terrain management system delivers true all-road capability with an intelligent four-wheel drive system. A simple-to-use dial in the center console lets you choose from four different surface conditions. It starts in standard mode for regular on-road conditions. The terrain management system controls engine, transmission, and brake control systems to match the conditions of the surface. As conditions change, just turn the dial. Switch to mud ruts, and the terrain management system knows exactly what to do. Increase engine torque set to the rear wheels, add a slight delay in transmission upshifts, and modify sensitivity and stability control, helping to keep your wheels spinning to maintain your momentum through rutted, soft, or uneven terrain. Switch to sand, and the system aggressively changes transmission upshift timing, preemptively increases rear torque, and modifies wheel slip response to move you through soft, dry sand or deep gravel. And for a firm surface that is covered with loose dirt or slippery snow, switch to grass gravel snow. The system reprograms to faster transmission upshifts, increases slip and stability control, slightly adjusts engine torque, and improves yaw control, all for more confident handling and challenging slippery conditions. Dependable, capable traction and control when you need it most. Drive it, and you'll see why this new terrain management system is a big part of what makes the all-new Explorer a totally reinvented modern SUV. So as I mentioned before, uh, all-wheel drive is acting with other systems on the vehicle. Another one we want to talk about today is torque vectoring control. This is a brake-based system. It's using, utilizing the vehicle's brake, uh, uh, the existing brake system, with controls that balance and optimize that engine torque and the brake torque in order to get the vehicle around corners in a, a, a better fashion. So primarily what it's doing is applying torque to an inside wheel. Uh, as we mentioned before, we've got differentials uh, on, on vehicles. We don't use one in the center because the uh, clutch, the on-demand clutch system works in a more efficient fashion. But almost every axle out there has a differential in it. And differentials are nice in that they send torque uh, in an axle equally to the right and the left. Normal driving, that's exactly what you'd want. The downside of a differential is that when you start losing traction on one side or the other, that equal split no longer helps you. So when you go through a corner and you start uh, your vehicle, any vehicle going through a corner, is going to lean a roll somewhat to the outside and unload that inside wheel. So let's say you're, you're turning to the left. That left wheel is going to unload a bit and you'll be able to get less traction on that wheel because you've got less force pushing down on it. The problem is with the differential, as soon as you lose traction on that inside wheel, you've got an equal amount of uh, torque you can get to the outside wheel, which is basically limiting you. You're stuck right there by the limit of your inside wheel. So what torque vectoring control is going to do is apply a brake in that situation in order to allow extra torque to be transferred to the outside wheel. That's going to give you that vectoring that extra force to help pull you around that corner from the outside wheel. 
And uh, the system's tuned to minimize the amount of vehicle deceleration because it's just coming in when you're at that limit. So torque, uh, as far as advantage to the customer, torque vectoring control is going to increase the traction and the agility of the vehicle when you're on throttle and you're turning the vehicle. It's going to provide more grip, better handling. It's a real confidence builder for a novice driver. For a more experienced driver, it lets them take full advantage of the capability of that vehicle because they can use that extra traction on the outside wheel when they go into a turn. Last one we want to talk about is curve control. Curve control is a high new system. It's not something we're going to demonstrate here, but it's a, a, a technology we wanted to mention in that it's a, a very powerful system to help stabilize the vehicle if the customer is coming too fast into a turn. So it's just like the other systems here, it's operating very quickly. This is operating about every 10 milliseconds. It's going to recheck all the uh, sensors and uh, reevaluate its decisions. And every 10 milliseconds, it's going to determine if it needs to uh, take action based on if a customer is entering a turn too fast. If they're coming to a turn too fast, it's going to use both the brake and the engine system to reduce torque. It's very powerful and very quick. It can actually scrub about 10 miles per hour of speed off of a vehicle within a single second. So that's all done to stabilize that vehicle, let the customer, uh, help that customer maintain control of the vehicle in a corner.